everybody. Welcome to Refresh tonight. We're gr grateful that you're here with us. Let me turn my phone down. <laughs> Thought I had it on mute. Sure is good to see you tonight. Welcome to Refresh and glad you're joining in with us. I'm seeing folks jump on. So uh, good to have you with us. Good to, uh, good to see each one of you connecting with us tonight. Listen, as we go through our time together tonight, Mine. Let's, uh, <laughs> and this <time's> a laptop. <laughs> let's go ahead and we got all kind of technical difficulty going on here about our own <laughs> private stuff. But go ahead and be sure to put on uh, any requests that you might have. Uh, let us know how we can pray for you, yeah. how we can be praying with you. So uh, good to see y'all jumping on. Hey, Jewel, how you doing? Hey, Miss Cheryl. Hey, Jerry. Enjoyed watching you there tonight live. Did a great job. Uh, Eric, Ryan, good to see you guys jumping on. We're going to take a minute and let some folks continue to connect with us. Uh, good to see John connecting with us. I saw Brandy and Dean are with us. They're outside. Hey guys, they're out there playing. <laughs> so uh, if you hear a basketball dribbling or hear kids, that's Dean and Perry out there. So uh, practicing our social distance though. But uh, good to see you tonight. Continue to, to jump on, continue to share your prayer requests with us. Good to see uh, Kim jumping on and Miss Juanita and Mr. Bill and Cheryl, good to have you guys with us tonight. So we're going to wait for just a, a minute or two before we get started. And um, hello to the Lunger family. Good to see you guys tonight. We're going to be at Psalm 34 in just a couple minutes. So if you want to mm -hmm. grab a Bible or uh, well, maybe you're real coordinated, you can use your phone for both Facebook and uh, the Bible app. But we're going to be in Psalm 34 in just a few minutes. So if you want to Get ready and go there. Uh, LaVie's going to lead us in a couple songs here in a couple minutes, and then uh, we will be good to go. So, uh, again, good to have you all connecting with us. Thanks for uh, for tuning in tonight. And I'm going to pray right now and uh, ask God to bless our, our time together, and then LaVie's is going to lead us uh, in a song or two, and then we're going to talk a little bit more from Psalm 34 tonight. So uh, let's pray. We ask God to bless our time together. Father, thank you for technology. Thank you that even though we can't be physically uh, here together with one another, thank you that we have the, the uh, incredible opportunity and privilege to at least connect uh, digitally. And I pray tonight, Lord, as we uh, lift up your, your, uh, your name in a couple songs, I pray, God, that you be honored and magnified in that. I pray as we, uh, again, dive back into Psalm 34 for a few minutes, Lord, that uh, you'd show us a couple things tonight, Lord, how we can we can communicate better with you and be be deeper connected with you. So I just pray tonight, God, that you be honored in all that we say and all that we do. So we love you, we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lavish, you want to lead us in a couple songs? All right. So um, again, if you're on Facebook, uh, right up underneath the title, it says April 22 Refresh. You can go down and the lyrics for the song is there, but I'm pretty sure this is a song that you all know very well, at least the two songs in the chorus of the next song you'll know very well. So uh, hopefully you'll join along and sing with me as I sing this. When peace like a river attended my soul When sorrow like sea billows roll Whatever Thou hast taught me to say it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with 
been great singing. Appreciate uh, those two songs. One of my favorite is How Great Is Our God. And uh, just appreciate that good word through music. And uh, I'll tell you, LaVis and I had an interesting day today. Uh, you'll learn more about that on Sunday. But uh, I'll just give you a little hint about something. We got really wet today. And it was very cold. But uh, anyway, you'll hear more about that on Sunday. I encourage you, if you would, we're going to be in Matthew 8 Sunday. Last week we talked about uh, deepening our faith. This week we're talking about uh, developing our trust. And uh, we uh, developed our trust uh, a little bit today. So I can't wait to share a good word with you on Sunday. But uh, looking forward to that. Again, if you have any prayer requests as we go through uh, our time together, go ahead and be sure and uh, put those on their Facebook uh, and let us know. And as you see those pop up, uh, go ahead and make sure we're praying with one another and for one another um, as we go through uh, the evening tonight. So uh, Psalm 34, we, we're, we started there last week. Uh, we looked at verses 1 through verse 7. Tonight I want to read verses 8 through verse 14, share just a, a couple of thoughts with you, um, share a couple of truths with you, and then we will uh, take some time and, and go in uh, and pray. So, um, by the way, I don't, I don't know about you, but it seems like um, every week it gets more challenging and more challenging. Uh, things are, our staff meeting yesterday, we were talking about how, how complicated this season really is on so many uh, different levels. Um, but at the same time, it's an it's a incredible and wonderful opportunity we have to be um, a source of light and encouragement uh, to the people around us and to our family and to our friends. So uh, Psalm 34 is where we're going to be tonight. Psalm 34, look at verse 8. It says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. It's interesting, the word refuge really means the one who trusts in him. Um, this week, that's where God's had me at in preparing for the message on Sunday, is this whole idea of of trust and what does it really mean to trust God? And again, we we experienced something this morning where um, we were trusting uh, God a little bit uh, more than we typically do. Um, but I wanted to share this with you. Trust. Uh, one of the one of the commentaries I was looking up. Trust means to flee for protection or to confide in. So it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who trusts or who takes refuge in him, the one who flees to him for protection or confides in him. So to trust God or to trust in him means to run to God for protection. So trusting doesn't mean that I'll never have moments where we don't panic right. or feel like everything's caving in around us because we all will have those feelings. Um, instead, what it does mean is as soon as you feel those feelings coming on, the sweaty palms, the anxiety, the nervousness, um, or maybe just feel like crawling in a hole or, or crying, it's those times that we, we run to our bedroom, we run to our closet, and we run to God. Right. So when David's saying, taste and see that the Lord is good, Blessed is the one who takes refuge or who trusts in him. It doesn't mean that everything's always going to be perfect. It does mean that we can go to him and find help and encouragement. So that trust, I came across a statement. I'm going to share it on Sunday in the message. Uh, Oswald Chambers, and again, I love reading Oswald Chambers. The problem is I've got to read it three or four times <laughs> yeah. to really understand what it truly means because it's so deep. But li listen to this statement. That trust which lives on men's lips and never affects their hearts is a deadly delusion. I don't know if you completely comprehend that, so I'm going to read it one more time. That trust which lives on men's lips and never affects their hearts is a deadly delusion. I think, I think, there are even seasons in my life where it's delusion because I have it on my list, but my life really doesn't, and my heart's really never affected by it. So our trust needs to go beyond just saying, God, I trust you with my lips, but it really affects my heart. And I understand, I realize that, you know what? I can trust him. 
I can run to him. I can taste and see that he is good. David goes on in verse number 9. says, Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. Man, let that verse just kind of resonate and sink into your heart this evening. Listen to verse 10. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. What does it mean when you hear or you read something like that? It says, seek the Lord. What does it really mean to, to seek the Lord? It was interesting. Uh, I kind of did a little word study in preparing for tonight. And in Strong's, the, the word seek means to tread or frequent, to follow, to seek, or ask, or to worship. So, so follow this thought with me. This was, I thought this was really good. This is, this is worth it right here just for tonight because I think many of us are struggling in this season with what does it mean to trust God what's it mean to seek God so to tread or frequent means our path to God in prayer is well worn and automatic hmm. it's well worn so I remember growing up as a kid uh, we lived on a corner lot and my backyard was a larger lo lot because it was a, a corner lot and we we my house was the house where all the guys came and played baseball. We started with wiffle ball, and then we moved up. You guys remember the, the spongy rubber ball? We moved up to that until we started pulling it down third base line and, and cracking some, some window, windows in the back of the house. But you could walk out to that house at any point during the summer months, and you knew where home plate was, first base, second base, and third base, because there was a well-worn path around that little baseball diamond we had in our backyard. And what it means when, we, when it says to, to seek him, it means that there's a, there's a path that we have to God that is well-worn. Um, and it, not only is it well-worn, but it's automatic. It's not, okay, who do I, who do I text? How, how can, I, can I share this on Instagram or, or on Facebook? It, it, that, there, those are the other options. The main option is I'm going to go to God, and it's just automatic. Yeah. To follow. To follow means we let God lead. Uh, again, I don't know about you, but I know for me, I have a hard time uh, not being in control. It's just kind of how I'm wired as a, as, a, as a person, as a man, as a leader. And it's very difficult sometimes to let God lead. Maybe, maybe you're farther along in your journey than me, but I know that's a challenge I have. And, and what this really means is when it says seek, it means I'm following. I'm, I'm willing to let God lead. And we don't tell him where we want to go. And again, I think we get so distracted because we have what we think is best. And we've got to really understand and realize that we don't know what's best, but God mm. really does. To seek or to ask means we aren't afraid to make our requests known to him. He already knows. So why not share it with him? Why not take it to him? Why not seek him out? And then to worship, that part where it talks about to, to, uh, when it says seeking him, seeking the Lord to follow, to seek, or to ask, or to worship, what it literally means, and this is so good, we give him all the glory ahead of the answer. That's good. And I think too often in our own journey, we're in, and we're in the, the middle of it, and we're striving, and we're, we're persevering, it's hard to give him the praise then. It's easy to give him the praise when we get on the other side. And when it says seek the Lord, it means even in the midst of the trial, even in the midst of the challenging season, I'm still going to bless him before he even gives me the answer. That's, that's good. That was worth the price tonight. <laughs> Verse 11, look what it says. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. If I could take 20 minutes and talk about that, how we lack a true fear of God, a true reverence of who he is. Verse 12. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Verse 14, turn from evil and do good. Seek, listen to this, seek peace and pursue it. Seek peace and pursue it. If there was ever a time in the life of Christianity where we need to apply one of the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, is today. 
It, it's the season we are currently living in today. Not a doormat, not stand up for your rights, but seek peace. Seek being a peacemaker. L- listen to the statement. Nothing, nothing promotes our happiness more than peace. Strife awakens passions which eat into the heart with a corroding power. Wow. Seek peace and pursue it. Here's a great statement. It's a real simple statement. A little one-liner. We won't be at peace for long if we're not doing much to pursue it. Maybe the reason why our anxiety levels go up, maybe the reason why our anger goes up is maybe because we're not pursuing peace. Some good stuff in there. Mm. Just those couple verses, man. If nothing else, I, sh- I hope, it, hope and pray it encourages you to want to pray more, to want to seek God more, to want to be a peacemaker and pursuing that peace. So in verse 8, we see that God is our refuge. In verse 9, he's to be revered or respected or feared with a holy fear. Not a not afraid of God, but a respect of God. Verse 10 tells us he's our provider. Verse 11 tells us we're to be teachable. Verse 12 and verse 13 teach us we're to guard our life and our lips. And then verse 14 tells us we're to seek Peace. Seek peace. Last week I shared with you that David was determined. We saw that in verses 1 through 3. Verses 4 through 7, we saw where David was delivered. Tonight in verses 8 through 10, we see that David was dependent. He was dependent on God for his safety or his refuge. He was dependent on God for his substance, his, his everyday needs, his everyday living and then in verses 11 through 14 we see that david was dedicated he was dedicated with his lips he wanted to make sure he was speaking the truth speaking the truth in love but speaking the truth and then he was dedicated with his life he was striving to be at peace i pray tonight that that that's our desire that we can strive to be like David here in this psalm, that we'll be determined, that we'll understand that God's going to deliver us, that we will become dependent on him, and that we really would dedicate ourselves to him. As we, as we get ready to go into prayer, and as you are spending some time in prayer with the Lord this week, can I just give you a couple little practical applications based on, <clears throat> based on what we read just in these few verses from 8 through verse 14. Maybe as you begin your prayer time tonight, whether it's there in your house or maybe later on in your your quietness before you go to bed, maybe whisper this thought, I will praise you, Lord, because you have delivered me from the fear of what? What fear has God delivered you from? Or possibly your prayer might be this, God, give me the grace Give me the grace to pursue peace in everything I do. I learned this little phrase years ago, uh, EGR. Can I just tell you some people are EGR people. EGR means extra grace required. (laughs) There are a lot of people in our lives many times that, that are EGR people. They require extra grace, especially when it comes to contention. And if we're going to be at peace, it's God, give me the grace. Give me the courage to pursue peace in everything that I do. I hope that encourages you tonight. I hope there's some things in there that not only encourage you, but I hope there's some things in there that, that really challenge you and challenge. I know I, I'm challenged. Again, I've been camping out in Psalm 34, uh, just trying to keep some fresh things uh, these next couple weeks for you guys out of Psalm 34. And there's some, there's some really good stuff in Psalm 34. So my prayer for you is that maybe you'll find yourself just kind of saturating your heart and your mind and your spirit and your soul with Psalm 34. It's interesting, David was known as a man for God's own heart. David wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. And David had all kind of failure 
in his life that his failure was never fatal and it was never final. He always found a way to rebound. And in the end, his definition of his life was, here's a man that followed hard after God. I don't know about you, but I know for me, that's, that's my desire. I want to be a man who follows after God, a man who, who um, follows after God's heart and presses into him. Let me share a couple of prayer needs I have with you tonight. And there's been some prayer requests have been flashing up on the, on the screen tonight. So I hope you'll be praying for uh, those who are sharing those prayer needs. I want to continue to bring uh, Larson Gray to you. Uh, we got a, a good report. He went and had some, some uh, tests done. His results this week were positive. Uh, there have been many weeks it's been negative. There were some positive um, responses back to uh, his test. And from what his wife Stephanie has, has said, um, they feel the chemo's getting a little bit of traction in his life right now. So that's a, that's a prayer request, but that's also a praise. So let's continue to pray for Marcin Gray uh, and his family. I got a text uh, this afternoon from a um, young, young family in our church, young man in our church, uh, Dean Perry. Uh, Dean's uncle uh, passed away. So I'd ask you to keep Dean and his family uh, in your prayers. Uh, also, Dean has a younger brother that uh, has had some sickness the last few months and really haven't understood exactly what it is, uh, but they've discovered that it is cancer of some kind, and he's scheduled to see an on oncologist this week. So would you pray for, for Dean Perry's uh, brother, and uh, let's keep, keep that family uh, in your prayers, if you would, please. Also, continue to pray for Mrs. Travers. I know Lisa, I was texting her, and she was put some stuff on Facebook, her mom's recovering pretty well from her stroke and, and doing good so let's keep miss bonnie in your prayers and uh, keep praying for her let's continue to pray for our president continue to pray for those um, leaders who are who are leading us during this challenging season um, let's continue to to pray for our local leaders um, uh, i've had a conversation uh, just the other day with Durrell. Uh, so he's trying to lead and, and, and do his best to lead the Red Clay School District. And um, pray for wisdom for him. You know, kind of caught in the middle trying to minister to the kids and not enough stuff, supplies and things like that. So just keep him in your prayers. Keep our governor in your prayers as, um, as we look to get beyond this season we're in, get beyond the curve, and try and get back to some sense of normalcy. Uh, Just whatever. two more prayer requests that, that was mentioned earlier, so for those who came on later that hasn't scrolled back. Ms. Cheryl Grave asked for a uh, prayer for her two sons, and then Ron Plosher mentioned a little boy known, uh, named Frankie who is starting a second round of chemotherapy a year's worth, and so pray for strength for his, obviously his little body, but also for them as a family and him and his parents. Absolutely. So there's, there's some prayer requests have been mentioned, so continue to pray for uh, these folks. And uh, again, just just grateful for uh, our church and how you guys are responding to things. I'm going to share a couple of announcements with you here in a couple of minutes of some opportunities we're going to have uh, in the very near future. But let's just take a minute and pray and uh, ask God to uh, to touch these prayer requests um, that we've mentioned and the ones that you've mentioned um, on the screen as well. So let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. God, we are so grateful for your love for us. God, we thank you that um, you want us to seek you, God. You want us to have a, a well-worn path that leads to your feet. So I pray tonight, Lord, is that we, can, we would understand we can come boldly into your presence to find help in times of need. And Lord, we lift up every one of these prayer requests to you. This young man uh, that Ryan mentioned, God, we pray for uh, Cheryl and Joe's sons tonight. God, we lift up uh, Dean Perry and his, his family, especially his young brother, pray that you would give him wisdom. God, I pray that, Lord, that you would intervene in this young man's life. And I pray that uh, they would go for the to see the uh, doctor, Lord, and, and you would remove what's there. I, I pray, God, that you would intervene in a supernatural way uh, in this young man's life. An athlete, loves sports. God, I pray that you would just intervene um, in his body tonight. God, I pray for uh, Marson, thank you for a good report. Thank you, Lord, for the traction that they got this week. And pray that um, the chemo would continue to work. Pray, to God, that you would uh, continue to give him his health back. Um, God, I pray tonight that you would um, 
be with Miss Travers and Mr. Travers. God, thank you for the good report uh, on both of them and pray you continue to bring healing and strength uh, back to them. God, we want to lift up our president to you tonight and pray, God, that you would give him wisdom, that you would put a hedge of protection around him. God, regardless of what our political views are, I'm grateful that we have a man in that position who um, who stands up for the rights of Christians, who who is a voice for the voiceless with um, abortion. God, thank you for thank you for a man who just wanted to stand on moral issues, regardless of what his life looks like. He's willing to take a stand on moral issues and fight a battle um, on on behalf of those people. So protect him, give him wisdom as he leads us through the season. I pray for each. Uh, governor across our country, Lord, as they wrestle with when to open, what, what, what to open, what not to open. God, give them wisdom. Um, and I pray for this, this virus, God. I pray, Lord, you could speak the same way you spoke <laughs> and the waves and the winds ceased. Uh, God, you could speak and this thing could be gone. So, Jesus, we ask tonight, we plead your blood over our country. We plead your blood over this virus. And God, we ask, Lord, that you would bring a sense of calm to our country. I pray that you take the anxiousness. I pray that you take the anger. I pray that you take the stress and the frustration. And God, you would just speak peace um, into the life of our country. Thank you that your word tells us there's nothing too big for you, that all things are possible with you. And I pray, God, that you would Increase our faith, God. We have a little bit of faith and a whole lot of unbelief. And I pray that you'd transition that unbelief to belief. And I pray, God, that you would move uh, this mountain um, in our country's life right now. So, Lord, we love you tonight. We're grateful for a chance we have to connect digitally tonight. Thank you for each person that connected with us. God, we pray your blessing over them. We thank you for... Um, what you're doing in the life of our church and um, pray for our community tonight. God, I pray for Darrell and, and other leaders. Lord, I pray for Matt Burroughs down in Middletown leading Apo High School. I pray for, for all of our um, school district leaders. Lord, as they, they work logistically to get food to kids who are in need, that they get, they're working to get um, uh, equipment to children that can continue to learn. So God, give those men and women in those leadership positions uh, wisdom. And for those that are believers and followers of you, God, I pray that you give them strength and courage for the days ahead. So, Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you that um, um, as we read in your word tonight, God, that you want us to seek you with all that we have. So we love you and we thank you for all you've done for us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for joining with us tonight. Grateful that you, you chose to, to spend a few minutes with us. Um, stay with me for just a minute. I got a couple of really important announcements I want to share with you that are uh, really important. All right. So first of all, um, we are partnering with um, our friends, uh, my friend Bobby, our friend here at church, Bobby Pancake, with Feed the Frontline. Um, any chance you have to stop by Buffalo Wild Wings, Limestone Barbecue, Expectation, um, and make a donation. Um, they're trying to feed different groups of people each day. Um we're going to have an opportunity actually tomorrow night, Thursday night. Uh, Samantha Latham, one of our partners, she's a nurse. Uh, they're working on the front line tomorrow night. We're going to have the opportunity to feed uh, her and a team of nurses and doctors that she's working with. So can't wait to, to take uh, some Buffalo Wild Wings food uh, to Sam and, and the front line workers she's working with and just be an encouragement to her. Um, so you can, you can be a part of that by making a donation um, a couple ways. You can either do something directly to um, one of the restaurants, or if you want to partner with us, uh, we're going to try and do this again, maybe with Sam or with some other folks. Um, we actually have on the website, catalyst302.com, top right hand side, online giving, drop box. You can give directly to Feeding the Front Line. And uh, anything that comes in for Feeding the Front Line, that's what it's going to do, is go to, to encourage and, and bless. Uh, some of those workers. So uh, second announcement, we shared this with you on Sunday and I was blown away at the response that we got back. Uh, there's a family in our church and again, out of respect for them, 
Um, mom is, is, is really sick. A um, couple small children. Um, dad is trying to manage the family, working during the day. Uh, we want to try and help them and encourage them by providing food. So what we've done is we bought a Grubhub um, gift card. That way they can order whatever food they want, have it delivered whatever time they want. Um, and we also have in that drop box on our online giving, there's a place on there for benevolence you can give towards that. And again, I was blown away just with one quick announcement this past week of how people responded to that. So we want to try and continue to uh, come alongside this family and help them and encourage them. So if you want to make a donation to our benevolence, um, that's where that's going to go. Um, next two I'm really excited about. Um, I really am. So Lavise uh, ordered this little, this little gizmo, this little gadget. Um, it's a tr transmitter? Transmitter. Transmitter. <laughs> Techie term. Um, that's going to allow us on Mother's Day to do a drive-in service. So you'll come in, you'll tune your radio to a certain station. Um, we're looking, we're not sure yet logistically where it's going to happen. Worst case scenario, it'll be here in the church parking lot. Uh, best case scenario, it may be off-site at a very large uh, parking lot. But uh, we're going to do a drive-in service for Mother's Day. Chance for us to maybe get together, maybe wave out the window to somebody, blow some kisses, do some air hugs, air high fives, whatever. But at least we can see one another. We continue to practice those social distancing. Well, um, we'll have a list. Like, you want to say hallelujah, you get a flash like four times. Or amen is two times. Or there you go. If you Beat you the know, horn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have some fun with it. But we're going to do a, a, a drive-in service. We ordered this a couple weeks ago. It came in. Uh, Lavis was already playing with it today and yesterday. So it works really well. So we're looking forward to, uh, to doing that service for Mother's Day. We'll have a special gift. Uh, to give the moms as well uh, that day. So uh, it's going to be a fun day for Mother's Day. Just pray it's nice and it doesn't rain. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how good your prayer life is, church. And then um, fourth announcement, and again, something I'm really excited about for a different reason. This is a, I'm excited about this because it gives us a chance to love on our community. So tomorrow, uh, Darrell, or today actually, he had a um, um, Zoom meeting with all of his principals for Red Clay School District. And uh, they're going to let us know uh, some pinpointed needs. We have a relationship with, with Ritchie Elementary. We have a relationship with Stanton Middle School and a little bit with Richardson Park. So through those two, three schools, we're going we're gonna to pinpoint some specific needs. And we're going we're gonna to do a food drive. There will be a lot more information for you on Sunday. Uh, there will be some emails going out about specifically, here's a list of items that we're going to collect. We're going to put boxes together and allow those families to come to the church and pick up, um, pick up those boxes. This past week, I was blown away. I think it was Monday. I was driving over from um, past the Christiana Mall, mm. and the food bank was out there giving food away, and it was almost like the mall was open. There was so many cars. So I think sometimes we live in a bubble. I know as a as a staff at the church here we're we're reaching out and, and we're getting very good reports that everybody's doing pretty well in our church and i think sometimes we we don't we don't remember that there's thousands of other people outside of that so this is a chance for us to come back and and work through um Durrell and the red clay school district work through uh the relationships we have with a couple of these other schools already and try and encourage and take care of some families so be listening next week or Sunday for some more information about exactly what that's going to look like and when you can start bringing some of these non-perishable items in. All right. And the last announcement I have is don't forget to join us at 1045 on Sunday um, or 1040. Well, so 1045 is when we start the singing and the preaching, but you're going to see the announcements or your, your notifications going on around 1040. There's a five minute countdown just to, because I know sometimes there's a little bit of a delay on Facebook or YouTube as to when those announcements go out, and we don't want you to miss anything on the service. It's going to be really great, um, and you definitely don't want to miss the Sunday. That's all I'm going to say. I'll tell you, I'm, I, I really am. I'm excited about this week's message. It's, it's about developing our trust. It's some, it's, trust is, a, is, a, is an issue in my own life that, that God's kind of putting his finger on for me right now, and uh, we had a, had a wild idea about <laughs> connecting the message, and you know, last week was, was, we videoed it out of our house, um, I won't tell you everything, but I'll just tell you that where we videoed, 
uh, we got wet today. And I'm just going to say, without giving anything away, this is the closest I've ever felt like I was a character in the Bible. Yep. And you'll see, if you <laughs> no want to know why that. I'm saying that, tune in Sunday morning, tune in Sunday 1045. Morning. Be and read- invite someone to come watch it with you. Yeah, be reading Matthew 8. That's the text that we're going to come from Sunday <laughs> about uh, developing our trust. So I hope you'll make plans to join us on Sunday. Do your best also on Sunday to, when you when you log on, uh, hit share and then watch party. And that, that'll automatically send notifications out to people who are your friends. And who knows the footprint that we might have um, as we do something real simple as pushing a button and sending it out. So... Uh, I promise you it won't be long. It's not a long service um, on Sunday. Uh, But I think there's some really, really good truth in there for all of us to grab a hold of. So hope to see you Sunday. And uh, thanks for jumping on tonight. We love you. We miss you uh, like crazy. Um, Hearts, hugs, everything going out on on Facebook. But um, can't wait to see you on Sunday. Have a great week. God bless you.